who you are. And lastly, I just want to say this. Making the Revenant was about man's relationship to the natural world, a world that we collectively felt in 2015 as the hottest year in recorded history. Our production needed to move to the southern tip of this planet just to be able to find snow. Climate change is real. It is happening right now. It is the most urgent threat facing our entire species. So if you don't want to believe all the scientists, you can take your cue from the rest of the animal and plant kingdom. Animals are migrating at different rates. Plants are migrating north that never made it north before because they can now sustain the warmth that is there. They're, they're uh, plants that are getting fertilized earlier than before. The migration patterns have shifted. And so nature already knows the answer to what it is everyone here is arguing about. carbon dioxide in the air at a prodigious rate and the world's getting warmer and you can know this by looking at the neutrons in the ice. You can know this by looking at the pollen grains per cubic centimeter in the sediment of ponds. You can know this by looking carefully at the rings on trees during warm seasons, wet seasons, cold seasons, dry seasons. And you can work your way back and figure out that the earth is getting warmer faster than it's ever gotten before. And that's the problem. It's not that the world hasn't had more carbon dioxide. It's not that the world hasn't been warmer. The problem is the speed at which things are changing. We are inducing a sixth mass extinction event. It says you don't need to be a full-time climate scientist to understand it. Representatives in Washington apparently know more about scientists, about science than our scientists, or they pretend to because big corporations give them a lot of money to make sure they can keep doing the destructive things that they do. Uh, the, I, in a free country, which at least we believe, we, we tell ourselves we live in a free country, I, I, don't, I don't care what you believe. You believe whatever you want. The problem comes about is if you are in denial of an emergent scientific truth and you wield power over legislation, that's a recipe for disaster. The person on the street doesn't care about climate change or doesn't, you know, maybe I'll, we'll have a conversation, but I'm not going to lose sleep over that. It's when someone, an elected official, stands in denial of climate change, something that scientists have been telling them now for decades, and they're going to create legislation in response to that. What, that is the end of an informed democracy. The end. metropolitan area. I say, you know, if we lose the ice caps, you know how high the water will be? I say, oh, maybe a couple of feet. Okay. No, it would come up to the Statue of Liberty's elbow. It's not about when the entire islands are underwater. It's well before that is going to be the crisis. And it's already happening. I've got 12 grandchildren. I'd like to be able to, to go away knowing that they will continue to have a home.
This summer, I saw the effects of climate change firsthand in our northernmost state, Alaska, where the sea is already swallowing villages and eroding shorelines, where permafrost thaws and the tundra burns, where glaciers are melting at a pace unprecedented in modern times. And it was a preview of one possible future. A glimpse of our children's fate if the climate ch keeps changing faster than our efforts to address it. Submerged countries, abandoned cities, fields that no longer grow, political disruptions that trigger new conflict, and even more floods of desperate peoples seeking the sanctuary of nations not their own. We are the first generation to feel the impact of climate change and the last generation that can do something about it.